Welcome back to Moments with McClellan. And for our Women's History Month guest, we have a history maker, Speaker Emerita, Nancy Pelosi. Thank you for joining us on Moments with McClellan. Thank you. It's my honor to be with Moments with McClellan and especially in Women's History Month. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, we've got some fun questions to ask okay. you. And the first one is, uh, you are an undeniable trailblazer who mm -hmm. has shattered glass ceilings. Uh, becoming the first woman speaker. Um, what is your advice to women and young girls everywhere? Well, first of all, let me just say, it was a marble ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Glass would be easy around here. This was yeah. a couple of hundred years of everybody being in line, a pecking order, and so we had to sort of disrupt that. But my advice to young women, or any women who were coming either out of school or out of the kitchen, as I did to the Congress, is just be yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, authenticity of you, the individuality of you, is something so wonderful and so needed in our country. Nothing is more wholesome to the political process or the governmental process than the increased participation and leadership of women, mm -hmm. as you know and have contributed to so personally yourself. The other part of it is I, it's tough. Mm -hmm. It's not a for the faint of heart, as you probably know. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, so know why, know your why. I always say to people, know your why. If you know why you're doing this, my why is the one in five children in America lives in poverty, goes to sleep hungry at night. I just couldn't deal with that without yeah. going from the kitchen to the Congress to house, housewife to house member, house speaker, because of, of the children. But know your why, and when you know your why, it, it makes all the rest of it easy. You don't even mind the slings and arrows because you're there for the children, or in my case, for the children. So we you know you're incredibly busy, um, but at the end of a long session week, what do you like to do to relax? Relax, no. Our <laughs> motto is resting is rusting. We just all keep busy. We do our politics on the weekend uh, or civic events at home. As you know, you're very close, so it's easier than being across the country, yeah. but on the other hand, everybody expects you to be at every event, right? Because right. you're close by. But no, I, I uh, well, if I had to relax, if I had to, I would be eating very dark chocolate ice cream and uh, <laughs> doing a crossword puzzle. Uh, my husband wants to do other things, and so we, uh, you know, we love to see movies and go to the live performances and all the arts, really. Or uh -huh. our entertainment. Well, oh, good, good, good. Well, you actually anticipated one of my questions, and that is we all know that you love chocolate and ice cream. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite type of chocolate? I think you just told us, but... Very dark. It has to be very dark, or else it doesn't count. Milk, <laughs> forget it. Um, but um, I have certain brands where it's very dark mm -hmm. for the chocolate. In San Francisco, we have Ghirardelli chocolate mm -hmm. and Seas Candy, very dark. And uh, so it just depends on the brand. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what's your favorite ice cream? Well, that would be a non would be a political question. Um, <laughs> Not the brand, the flavor. Oh well, the very very dark chocolate ice cream. Um, oh yeah. It comes in a number of different uh, brands, and then some famous and some in our neighborhood. Yeah, I love it. And, I, and I, I like it for breakfast. I you don't have to cook. <laughs> and you don't have to clean. You just get that thing out of the freezer. and I would eat ice cream all day if I could. <laughs> um, so let's see. I got all my questions out of order, but that's okay. What is your favorite guilty pleasure movie or TV show? Oh, I don't know. Uh, um, there's just, it just depends. Uh, the... It, I, I enjoy what my husband enjoys, and so when we can do that together. But um, during COVID, we got used to a different, a whole other variety of them. Of them, but I like the ones that have women in, mm -hmm. in making progress, whether personally, professionally, politically, and in every way. That gives me uh, that gives me great pleasure, because I think we're at a place, Jennifer, and 
By the way, we're so rich with Jennifers from Virginia, <laughs> aren't we? We are, and yes. Maybe more to come, who knows? But the, um, I think we're at a place, whether it's in entertainment or whatever, where we have to make our own future. Mm -hmm. And it's not about incrementally women doing a little bit better, a little bit better. It's about changing everything. That when I ran for WIP, my first race in leadership, I had a frog to leapfrog over all these uh, ideas that people had about leadership here. <laughs> and, um, uh, and I think that, that everybody's ready for women to be more. And look in your case. Mm. You came here just as your predecessor did, effective from the start. Thank you. And I know that your experience in Virginia served our whole country well when you arrived. We're so thrilled that you're here. But it, you come with a sense of confidence mm -hmm. that you're going to make sure your constituents are well represented and your views are well mm -hmm. respected. Well, thank you for that. I'm glad to be here. I'm very excited to be here. Um, so what is the last book you read? My, well, it was just, somebody was asking me my favorite book just now, and I, I said that it was something called Age of Wonder. Mm -hmm. And I've read it a number of times, and it's not brand new, a couple of decades old probably by now. And it's about all the wonderful things that have happened and what science has done and how it wasn't accepted at first mm -hmm. and and that, and then other remarkable things. So I, I love that book, and I... Um, I recommend it, but otherwise, I like any book that any of my children have written. Oh, <laughs> like, like any good mom. Yes. Um, my my daughter and my husband are working on a children's book. So oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Paul. And that will be your favorite book. It will be my favorite book. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, so you are. The question says, arguably, I will say you are. You are one of the most consequential and accomplished speakers in history. You played a key role in passing key legislation. Um, how, how have you navigated everything you've had to navigate and persisted in a place that really wasn't built for women? Yeah, it's a funny, th I appreciate that question because when I came, there were, out of 435 members, 23 women. Wow. Isn't that something? That's crazy. Ridiculous. 12 Democrats, 11 Republicans. I'm just talking about the House. Barbara Mikulski was in the Senate, so it wasn't that much more, but nonetheless mm -hmm. in the House. So I um, made a decision, uh, being the former chair of the California Democratic Party, that I knew how to win elections, and we were going to be on a path to encourage, to help finance, to give confidence to women, to say, we need you here. It really is it's a responsibility you should assume. And now we have 94. We went from mm -hmm. 12 to 94. I still want more. And we're going to get more. Mm -hmm. The Republicans have gone from 11 to 30-something, I think, which is something. I mean, it took them a while to do that. But ours was a decision. Mm -hmm. It was a, de a decision. So that, to me, is a, a, and And it's not just women advancing, women, women of color and other people of, of diversity. I, I'm so proud of the fact that our caucus is over 70% women, People of color, LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. It's a remarkable thing. Now we want more, and we must have the majority. And I'm so pleased that our leadership is so diverse. Any one of them could be speaker. Hakeem will be. I, I'm hoping this year, but it may have to wait <laughs> until next year. We'll see. You never know. <laughs> you never know <laughs> uh, with all the things that go on. But I'm very proud. And that, that for me, was a joy of stepping aside to know the... the um, not only the talent, the values, the prospects for our, our new leadership, but the fact that it's women and people of color is something I'm very proud of. It's very exciting, very exciting. Um, so what type of music do you like to listen to? Okay, so I like all good music. <laughs> that goes from rap to classical, and I avail myself of it. For example, I love sports too mm -hmm. as a distraction. So, uh, not a distraction, as a, uh, uh, I went to the Super Bowl in Las Vegas. San Francisco was in it. We didn't win it, but we were in it. And before, the night before, we went to the Sphere and we saw Bono and U2 in concert. Oh, it was beyond fabulous. And we have been, I don't like to 
interfere in my kids' music or my grandkids' music, but we all enjoy you two. We love Bono, Edge, Adam, the whole the whole team. So it was a family affair for us. We had a group of us who went, and it was fantastic. So I love that. When I was a newly elected speaker, I went to New York, and I was meeting with some leaders in the African-American community, and they said, we want our interns to come in and ask you some questions. One of the leaders who was there was the publisher of an African-American magazine. Mm -hmm. So the kids came in, and they said, we just have one question for you. How many members of Congress know the difference between rap and hip hop? (laughs) (laughs) That is pretty funny. It is fun. And right now my children are discovering artists that that I grew up listening to. And so that's funny. My daughter is like, have you heard of Michael Jackson? I'm like, yes. (laughs) Well, I always say, one time I was taking to my grandchildren, they were like two and a half and three and a half to, to, to a toy store. And we go in the store and they're playing music. And the three and a half says to the person, do you have any Michael Jackson music here? And, we're like, and they're dancing, but they're, they want Michael Jackson. So um, Michael Jackson is uh, goes back a long way. He and does. now part of the future's music is great. I saw on Broadway. Oh, wow. MJ. Oh, it's sensational. I highly recommend it. Good. Okay. Well, I'll keep that in mind. What is something that people would be surprised to learn about you? I see. Well, the thing, one thing they don't know about, I don't know if they'd be surprised, but you'd be the judge. The, um, before I came to Congress, see, I was always involved as a volunteer in the community, and then people tapped me to do this or tapped me to do that, and I didn't have ambition to do it, but I did. I, I, I was convinced. And so, um, but what I was doing when I had all my little babies, I have five babies in six years and one week. I say that because... I have to keep reminding my archbishop of that fact. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that I served at that time. I was invited to be on the LSB, LSB, Louis B. S. B. Leakey Foundation. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, I was very interested in the origins of man mm. and paleontology. And uh, so I was on that board for a while. And so we funded Jane Goodall and Diane Fossey, all these people, all the research into the, um, not just the primates, uh, but especially research into the origins of man and largely in Africa. And we even took our kids on a dig there when they were a bit older. So that has been a big interest in mind, the behavior of man. And it comes in handy now. Yes, I was just thinking (laughs) that as you said that. Um, So your birthday is March 26th. Yeah. Do you have a favorite birthday memory? None. No. <laughs> <laughs> less and less as time goes by. No, um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, something that may have been a coincidence on that day, but everything that my husband and I do is about our kids and mm-hmm. our family and now our grandkids. And we have 10 grandchildren. And um, so it, it, n- nothing is the favorite unless our children are there. And sense. our grandchildren, yeah. There's, it's 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 a, just a joy to behold and how they love each other and the rest. So oh, that's good. Well, happy birthday. Well, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Um, now you came into the house in a special election, and I came into the house in a special election. Um, what advice would you give brand new Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, knowing what you know now? Well, you came. I came in with twenty three Democratic women. Mm-hmm. I mean, twenty three women. 12 Democratic women. Mm-hmm. You and you're coming in, there are 100 and like 130 or 35 um, women members. That's a big difference, especially in our own caucus. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, many more women of color here too, before with you know, mostly men of color who were mm-hmm. here. So I would say that our experiences are quite different from that standpoint. When I came, it was in a special. They didn't at the faintest idea who I was because there was no, you know, you're in the pictures when you're in the class. Yeah. When you're not in the class, they had the faintest idea. And so every time I would like go onto the floor, even though I had the pen and all that, they'd say, you can't go there. I no, I, I can, but I'm a member of the <laughs> <laughs> and, and then so one day I was going someplace and 
the, the, the man said, you can't go there. I said, well, I'm a member of Congress. He said, oh, you can go any place you want. So subsequent to that, I'm on the floor whipping somebody. On a, I think it's a vote for HIV AIDS, which was my priority when mm -hmm. I came. I'm going after this person. They go out the door. I follow them into the speaker's lobby. I follow them into another door. And the people, the guards there were saying, you can't go there. You can't go there. I said, no, I can go any place I want. I'm a member of Congress. <laughs> and they said, it's the men's room. <laughs> that I didn't want to go there. No, you don't want to go there. <laughs> um, no, but so it was It yeah. was different. So when you came, you, you had people were so excited. We love Don McEachin so much, Donald. Mm -hmm. He liked to be called Donald mm -hmm. around here. So you should know. He had come effective from the start as regular elected member and his work, which I had been with him in Virginia when mm -hmm. he was member of the legislature, mm -hmm. working on climate issues and environmental issues. So when he came here, he, he, he got right into it there. Then when we saw that he, that he was not well and that was so sad, but we, there was so much um, anticipation of your coming. There was none of my coming, but I saw I was in the middle when. <laughs> but there's so much anticipation of your coming. It was really a joy. So, and I think that I can say to you with great pleasure that you have lived up to every expectation oh, thank you. and beyond. And you look like you enjoy it so much. Oh, I love it. I love every minute of it. Even the crazy moments. I love so. Well, you see how necessary it is for you to be here when you see the crazy moments. I do. <laughs> it, it's yeah. I joke with my husband all the time. You know, I knew I was going to make history as the first black woman elected from Virginia, but I didn't know how much history with ousting the speaker and three weeks without one, and just it's been crazy. But um, knowing that I'm making a difference on on such a bigger scale, That's great. and um, and there are a lot of good people here trying to do the right thing. Um, the crazies just, uh, they bog things down, but we keep working. Well, you, you've come at an unusual time. Well, when we have so many women, of course, that's important. Uh, very high priority for all of us. But the necessity of your being here when you see what's happening on the other side. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll go way back. You said compared to when I came, we had much more collegiality and bipartisanship. And, and we, Really, it was like a kaleidoscope. Sometimes the Democrats and Republicans would come together here and Democrats and Republicans in opposition. And then the next time, be all Democrats against all of them. You never knew what turn mm -hmm. of the kaleidoscope dial was going to bring. So you respect each other because you're always going to be a resource to each other. Mm -hmm. The difference in values now is quite drastic. There's yeah. some people we will never yeah. yeah, I mean, they just don't share our values in terms of respect for the dignity and worth of every person and to meet, to meet the needs of every person yeah. in our country. Well, we keep fighting anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, okay, uh, what is the most adventurous thing you've ever done? What is the most adventurous thing I've ever done? Oh, this is going to be so boring. I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I have to think about it. But I will say that one adventure we did take with our children was to take them on safari in Africa, as I oh, referenced wow. earlier, and into Lake Turkana to, on a dig with the Leakey family. And that was a, a wonderful ad adventure. Uh, it may not, it, I know you appreciate that it's an adventure with a, an anthropological royal family, but taking five kids with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The shoe was touching my toe, you know, that kind of thing in the car. You know, you oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's looking at me. <laughs> um, all right. Lightning round to finish us out. Okay. So beach or mountains? Beach. Yes. Although uh, we spend a lot of time in the mountains. We're skiing, family, a beach. Same. Uh, your favorite season? But it depends on where I am. I love summer in mm -hmm. California. The fall is beautiful. Yes, yes. But yes, I love yes. summer. It's because of the beach. Because of the beach. That's <laughs> right. Uh, Ocean City, Maryland. I spent 20, like a quarter of my life there. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, what's the favorite, your favorite destination you visited? Home. <laughs> <laughs> Morning person or a night owl? Oh, all day. I don't sleep. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I love the night and I love the morning and it's just, I wish, here's what I wish. 
I wish there were more hours in the day. I can't Because there's so much more work to be done or good things to happen. But you got to go to sleep and it, it takes so much time. Do you find you're more productive in the morning or night or any, any, any time? You're probably productive any time. Well, people tell me, do more of your work in the morning because when you're doing it at night, you're calling us, keeping us up. <laughs> And you are also keeping yourself up all night thinking, why did this happen or why did that happen? So do it That's in the morning. Fair. That's As fair. Do it in the morning. That's fair. We just ce celebrated Pie Day, and yeah. we had a survey here in the 4th oh, yeah. District. What is your favorite pie? Oh, well, my favorite pie is anything chocolate, so you know I'm that. Not surprised. But our family <laughs> does it. March 14th is a day of reverence for Pie Day, P-I. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad. And, and we have all these messages to each other. Viva math, and, and we had in California, I mean in San Francisco only, on the ballot a, uh, an initiative requiring algebra being taught in eighth grade. You wow. would think that was happening anyway, but uh -uh. requiring it to be done. So we considered that sort of a pie, even though pie is, geomet is geometry, yeah. it was still a math day. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so last question. Do you have a favorite superhero? Oh, my parents, oh. I mean, my superheroes, you know, no, no question about that. But um, I just, I see the courage of our members here that just is astounding because we have to vote our conscience, we have to vote the Constitution, we have to vote our constituents, and sometimes our constituents are not understanding the national issue. Well, what, they're not here to know right. what the choices are, and that takes courage. But I would say, combining those two questions, your last two questions, it was an honor to serve over 30 years with John Lewis here yes. in the Congress. We all know historically and, and from the public view of him how wonderful he was. But serving with him was a, a, a special privilege beyond description, and I was very honored as speaker to preside over his ceremony in the in the Capitol, even though it was during COVID time mm -hmm. and we couldn't have his, everybody, but we we had the priorities that he would want. They're the Black Caucus and others uh, in, in the, under the dome of the Capitol. And what I did that day was I was supposed to give a speech about John, and I spoke a bit, and then I said, and now I'm going to yield to the gentleman from Georgia and then his voice came over. Oh. And he gave his beautiful speech, his closing speech about not being a bystander and democracy. Yeah. Is, and it was so fabulous. But when I said I'm yielding to the gentleman from Georgia, all the Georgians thought they were going to speak. I, like, <laughs> <"Not you." laughs> I had, um, he came to Richmond when we renamed uh, Street Arthur Ashe Boulevard. And it was at the Museum of Fine Arts, and they had an exhibit in an old Confederate chapel mm -hmm. where they play his speech from the Clinton impeachment. And so we walked in with him. We sat down on the front pew. We listened to it. And it was the first time he had heard the speech since he gave it. Wow. And watching him oh listen to himself is just a moment I will never forget. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. God bless you for that. Yeah. To give him that joy. Yeah. That's so wonderful. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And speaking of which, it was really fun interviewing <laughs> you. It is a pleasure and an honor serving with you. You are an inspiration and one of the bravest, kindest people I've ever met. So thank you so much thank for you. Appreciate your saying joining that. us. Well, you're the fresh recruits coming in. You're the future uh, in, the, in the present and future in the Congress. So it's a joy to see you succeed. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And thank you all for watching Moments with McClellan. Mm -hmm.